Hoo -ah! Fig fam, how are we? It's Saturday and it's a light rain, but rain never stops gardeners, right? Figs and coffee. Check this out. I'm doing something nutty, but it looks beautiful. Everyone see? Look at this crazy thing I'm doing to the micro orchard. I laid out trees evenly spaced and I just need more space. So I have laid out all the trees and they're all waking up at different rates. This is what March looks like and April all looks like where everybody's waking up on their own terms and it looks great. We dodged a freeze. I'm looking at the weather forecast and our last frost is April 1st. So I'm really excited. Look at these trees, everyone. Before I jump into it, look at that. Big ground trees. Col de Dame Blanc, Col de Dame Noir, Genovese Nero. Look at this Paradiso. This Paradiso I did a regenerative pruning to and it is just gonna be a tree this year. And I'm really excited. I have three main trunks, right? Rule of threes, guys. And then we're gonna go from there and let it grow before I isolate three secondary branches. So that's a fun little thing that I'm doing to make more space for my trees while having it navigable through the nursery. Because if you look over here, I already have a lot of trees and I'm already moving them all out. So there, it looks smaller now, but this is gonna be filled up in a matter of weeks. And then I'm gonna to have to actually probably expand out here. I have a bunch of dirt that I got from Wilmington Compost Company. Shout out to Riley and his team. They're awesome. I'm probably gonna expand the nursery out to here. So that much more space. All for the love of fig trees. Someone told me like, you really love figs. And I was like, honestly, I do. But I love propagating figs just as much. I'm kind of obsessed with it which is what's going on here, right? I'm doing this dense propagation. It's made me a lot of space. So you're talking about triple the amount of cuttings that I would do compared to this space here. But they're all waking up. But something I wanted to talk about today with you guys is now that it's spring, how do I fertilize a fig tree? And it's quite easy. I would give it a liquid fertilizer and I would also give it a slow release pelletized fertilizer. And you can use a wide variety of choices. I'll show you what I use today, and I am not picky, but I want it to be good, healthy, slow release fertilizer that has a lot of micronutrients. As important as your NPKs are, so your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium, or those three numbers you see across a lot of fertilizers, the micronutrients also play a pivotal role in the health of your fig tree, right? So like for all of us with our vitamins and nutrients play a huge role as well, which is why, you know, all our different B vitamins are important why we have vitamin A, C, D, D, E, F, riboflavin, right? So keratin, things like that, because they play pivotal roles in our health. And so I wanna talk about that with fig trees. Also a quick hack for all of you trying to introduce your fig cuttings to the outdoors, do it on a rainy day. They will still get UV exposure, but it won't be as intense as a full sun. And they'll get rainfall, which is a natural source of nitrogen. So let me show you my little fig shuffle that I do with my new cuttings on rainy days. And then we're gonna dive into how to apply a liquid fertilizer and a pelletized fertilizer on your fig trees, or at least what I do for my fig trees in the early spring. Really simple. I have these trees that I'm acclimating out to full sun. I like to keep them organized. Some are at different stages of growth, but again, only a few months old at this point, and you'll be surprised how much they'll grow in a year. But on rainy days like today, and I have a lot of trees, I can expose them to a little bit of wind and I can expose them to a little bit of sun and I can expose them to a good amount of rain that has a natural source of nitrogen, right? Which is good for vegetative growth of all plants. I'm organizing them. This is all one shelf of baby figs. Again, I think I can pull this off because I am a small scale nursery, but I'm finding that I'm rapidly growing in the best way possible. If you're a small scale nursery like me and or you're just a backyard gardener who's interested in growing fig trees from cuttings or have a young fig tree that you had bought and you want to know how to explode its growth, then this slow introduction of your figs to the outdoors is a great way to get them acclimated to the outdoors for spring. We all have busy lives, but as a person who is an athlete and advocate for outdoor exercise, some of this gardening work is quite beneficial to our health. But circling back, I am doing all of this because I want to get some light on them and I want to get some rainfall on them where I can get that natural nitrogen from rainfall. 
it's something easy that you can do to fertilize your plants. Because we all know fertilizer is getting quite expensive these days. <laughs> this one's gonna stay outside. Look how great it looks. It is a beautiful spring morning here in Wilmington, North Carolina. I got the birds chirping. I got all these figs. I have all these figs. I got the tomato that's moved outside. And it's a beautiful Saturday morning. So thanks for joining me. Sweet. So let's grab the fertilizers and bring them out to the fig tree. As you can see, I moved all the baby fig trees outside. And now we are going to grab the fertilizers and I'll show you what they are as far as what I use. And I'm not picky, but I am excited for a few. In the past, I have used True Organic, so I don't have any more because I used it all and it works great. It's very well rounded. It has five, four, six. So five for growth, four for fruit, flower, and root, and six for that sodium potassium pump. As you can see here, it has not just the NPKs, but it also has calcium and sulfur. It tells me where it all comes from, and a lot of it is organic matter, which is really cool. But this true organic stuff really benefited my fig trees. And again, I like promoting things that I like, but I am also not very picky. If you find that something works for you, the best thing I can say is if it's organic and has micronutrients, that's a really beneficial thing. And if it's well-rounded, figs are pretty resilient, but they benefit from a nice well-rounded slow release fertilizer in the spring now in the summer when you want to encourage fruiting because i get a lot of questions about how to encourage fruiting use bone meal bone meal has a lot of phosphorus and it's going to encourage that fruit set that fruit hold and that fruit ripening but we're not going to talk about that today today we just want to focus on waking our fig trees up so they're healthy at growing which means nitrogen but they also want to grow everything else like roots and have healthy cell growth so we want a nice well-rounded fertilizer with a lot of micronutrients as well. So for slow release today, I got this Ivy Organics. Shout out to them. I am really excited to use it. Again, 333, so it's very well balanced. And I am going to follow the directions. They're really easy directions. It's spreading one cup around the base of your tree. But there is all this writing here, and it's all in here for a reason. So if I can help break it down for you guys, that's really beneficial. If you buy stuff on your own, it might have slightly different directions. Just read the directions. People invested a lot of time into them, and I support that. But for today, I'm going to use one cup per three to five gallon tree, and it's going to have the macro and micronutrients to jumpstart my figs all spring. We're talking about slow release fertilizers, the pelletized form. That means it's going to last us weeks and weeks before I apply it again. Now, let's talk about liquid fertilizers that are going to directly benefit my trees now. Alaska Fish Fertilizer is by far the smelliest fertilizer I've ever worked with. This stuff is 511, so clearly it's really beneficial for the growth of your plant, and it comes from fish emulsion, so grind, ground up fish parts. Worst part is, is that it smells bad. The best part is, is that it works. And another added benefit, it works as a foliar application. So if it gets on the leaves of your trees, they can absorb nutrients as well. So if you are looking for something to jumpstart your young fig trees, and I know I mentioned earlier, we don't need pelletized fertilizer for rooted cuttings and young fig trees, but the liquid stuff will help them grow. Another liquid supplement I go is Mother Earth. This stuff, the Liquid Craft Grow is a 433. I've been using this for a year or two now. I got it at my local Ace Hardware and I'm still working my way through it. It is a great spring application. Now the main difference between these and these is that these are slow release. These take more time for those nutrients to actually impact your trees overall, but it's a sustained benefit over time. These will hit your trees much more quickly and benefit them. So in springtime, you definitely wanna apply the nitrogen-focused, growth-focused nutrients, and then you support those trees with a slow-release fertilizer over the course of the spring. A lot of times people talk about applying fertilizers to your fig trees every week, every two weeks, three weeks maybe. I only do it a few times in the spring per year, and then I do a big application in the summer, and then that should sustain them throughout the entire year. The idea for me is if I'm scaling, I want it to be easy. If you are gardening with me, I want it to be easy for you. So if you find the time to apply these fertilizers over the course of weeks, you can certainly do so, but make sure you read the directions. But I do it a little less because I invest a lot of time into good soil. So good, Micro rhizae health in good compost 
with nice aerated soil will allow uptake of the nutrients into your fig tree. And they don't need quite as much fertilizer all the time if you have really good soil that they're in already. And mycorrhizae I brought up is a type of fungus that is intertwined with the root systems to help make nutrients bioavailable to the trees themselves. So it's a nice symbiotic relationship. About 95 plus percent of all plants work with mycorrhizae. Beans don't, they work with bacteria, but they do a similar commensalistic relationship. But again, springtime, liquid fertilizer benefits them right out the gate. So you think of a horse race, gates open, you give them a boost with liquid fertilizer, liquid fertilizer. Then to make it around all the entire track through the springtime, the slow release, even though you apply it at the same time, will benefit them as they make the turns and they look for more nutrients. So this sustained release stuff is really good. And here's the other kicker that I covered just a bit ago, but I'm gonna tell you again, as important as these NPKs are, the micronutrients are equally as important, right? So we're talking about our sulfurs, our irons, our magnesiums, our calciums. Figs really benefit from calcium and magnesium. They like a more neutral soil, which dolomitic limestone, if you guys have ever worked with garden lime, that's magnesium and calcium right there. And it's just limestone, which is a sedimentary rock from the dolomites in Europe. The magnesium gets in there through a chemical reaction of calcium carbonate. So, Let's go apply these to our more mature trees and our baby trees. So remember, babies really only need a little bit of liquid. And more mature trees, we can give some pelletized stuff for them. Let's get it all. So a great time to apply your slow-release fertilizer is when you have to up-pot your fig trees. Shout out to Dave Burke and his family, the fig hunters. This is the white Adriatic that I rooted it actually is in its second year. It exploded with growth. I had to prune the top off because I want to let it grow into its own tree, but it's too big for this three gallon. So into the five to seven gallon pot it goes. And remember what I said, when I'm up potting a fig tree, it is a great time to apply fertilizer. But let's get some potting mix in here first. This is a good step. So we got the potty mix here and we have the new pot here. Nice well draining mix. It is a mix of soil conditioner, perlite compost, and coconut coir. It's mushroom compost. All right, so see, I have a good base here. I want it to just be high enough at the, at the bucket here that I can still retain some water. And I want my roots to be uncovered here at the surface. You don't want to cover them up too much. They like shallow root systems. It's not too big a pot for it. I'm doing a gradual increase. And I'm actually angling it so that my main trunk will be vertical. But if you guys are curious how to up-pot your fig trees, I have a video of that back a few months when I was prepping my other trees for up-potting. You guys can hear all the birds. It's a beautiful morning here. It's about 69 degrees out. I'm wearing sandals. I'm wearing t-shirt. Getting my fingers in the dirt. It feels really good, big fam. And it's making a little sucker that I'm actually going to try to root later. So I have up potted it. And if you guys want to see real quick, I wrapped it around the sides and filled in there. And then I left this top part quite shallow. You can see the roots and things. That's perfect. You want your fig tree to have roots right at the surface like that, It'll be buried shallow. See, it's a little loose. Because this is well aerated potty mix that I made, this will settle when I apply water to it. And I apply it gently because I really want the water to soak in all around it, not just soak and find the weakest exit point and fall out. I want to immerse the soil because that'll benefit your fertilization. All right, let's apply a slow release fertilizer. Sometimes I eyeball it and that is okay. If you are an experienced gardener and you know what half a cup, a full cup, a quarter cup, a tablespoon look like, it probably goes if you're a cook as well. But if I know how much a cup is, I generally just reach my hand and I'll sprinkle it, wash my hands afterwards. I got this nice all-purpose fertilizer. Really, you don't need to be picky. You just need to give it some boost. This says one cup and spread it around the top. It's got a lot of great organic nutrients right here that I see. It says apply one cup. So I have a half cup here. 
and I'm going to point it to the top. And I'm going to massage it in to that top quarter inch. I want to move it away from the base of the roots so I don't burn them at all. So I'm moving that about two to four inches back since I just repotted it. Again, when you up pot something, it is a great time to apply your fertilizer. But every spring is a great time as well. The acidity from rainfall will help that nutrients break down, help ionize your potting mix, and help that soil take up the nutrients that you apply to it. So I got my one cup in of the slow release fertilizer. I'm gonna wash it in. I'm not gonna wash it in with the liquid fertilizer. I'm gonna apply that separately. I'm watering it lightly. I want to allow the nutrients to immerse itself into the potting mix. If I just put on the soaker, it would just find the weakest exit point. Say I had a weak point of soil and it would just all rush out here and it wouldn't get around the root ball itself. So when you're fertilizing your fig trees, apply the water gradually. And this is gonna go for the liquid fertilizer as well. All right, I got my mixing bucket and I'm gonna get my liquid fertilizers ready for all of my trees. So I use a big bucket. I know what the tablespoon, teaspoon line looks like, and it's very low. It's like down here, just enough to get coverage for five gallons. And that'll give me five gallons of solution. When you're mixing that much, make sure you're spraying your nozzle into the base and you're getting that all frothed up so you don't have different tiers of nutrients. These two are great options. Here's the trick, read the directions, because these talk about measuring in tablespoons, and these talk about measuring in teaspoons. So this is asking for two to four teaspoons per gallon, and this is asking for two to four tablespoons per gallon. Again, it ties back to reading their directions. There is some leeway with it, so do not beat yourself up. It's not like you're applying some sort of intense acid. You are just applying some nutrients, but it can burn your plants if you just go gung-ho and just dump it straight on the plant. Make sure you dilute it. There's a lot of thought that goes into these directions. If you use Alaska fish fertilizer, it is really good. It is really smelly. So I would do it outdoors. If you have a lot of wild animals, uh, like raccoons and stuff, they might sniff it out. If you have a dog, they may roll in it. So, you know, the ripeness of the smell kind of fulfills how good of a fertilizer it is. Uh, the liquid craft grow isn't quite as smelly for me and requires a little less by ratio, but it is more expensive. Uh, both of these I got at my local Ace Hardware. And I've had them for like, I don't know, a year and a half plus since I started the nursery and I still have a bunch left. But if you are looking for the ratios of a five gallon bucket, you just need to saturate about half a centimeter of material in here and fill it up to the top of the bucket about half inch from the brim. And that'll give you five gallons of fertilizer to put on all your trees. So let's do that with the Alaska Fish Fertilizer because it's early spring. I want lots of nitrogen vegetative growth. It's very goopy. Make sure you shake it beforehand. So the tablespoon ratio is about half a centimeter for all five gallons. You can see it in there. It's brown. It's viscous. It's goopy. It is ripe. But my plants love it. And that's my goal is raising happy plants that'll grow up to be happy trees. End quote, Bob Ross. <laughs> All right, let's dilute it, Fig Pan. Quick note, if you make all this fertilizer for your trees and you have leftover, it goes great in your garden too. I mean, your grass loves it. The only thing that doesn't really love it is my nose. There you go. All right, so I gave it its slow release fertilizer. Now I have its liquid instantaneous. Okay, so this can be kind of heavy. And so I like to scoop it out with a jug like so and i'm just going to sprinkle it just enough around the base to let it immerse itself into the tree and that's all i use easy peasy let it drain down back in it's relatively safe on the plants themselves and there you go fig fam i'm going to put the plant labels back in it isn't that great so now i've up potted the tree i've given it slow release fertilizer and now i've given it liquid fertilizer a liquid fertilizer is going to be absorbed now. The slow release fertilizer is going to be absorbed over the course of weeks. And then I have also on top of all of that, I have my brand new soil that I up potted it with. So I put it back in the lineup with all its siblings and that's one tree down for an up potting. I hope that was really beneficial to you. For young fig trees that I just rooted this year, this is Blava Campanera and this is Coraggio. 
Oh, correction, this is Marseille Black VS. They do not need the slow release fertilizer in the same way. They just need a little bit of growth help. And I just fill the base, just a nice little sprinkle in the base. And you can see it's already absorbed. It's because I have a nice well-draining potting mix. But I just give them a little bit of that. I might do that every few weeks for the rest of the spring until they really take off. And then I kind of monitor how the fig tree is doing. If it gets up here, maybe I could apply some sort of slow release fertilizer early later on. But they're so young, the root system's so new, you do not need a ton of slow release fertilizer. But that's all I do with the small guys. It's really easy. And again, that's that Alaska fish fertilizer. These trees are staying outside. If I do this in my greenhouse with like a foliar spray, I will use a spray jug like this. And I will water it over the leaves and a little bit on the root system and that'll help it absorb some of those vegetative growth focused nutrients. I'm really excited to use this stuff because I don't need a whole lot so this much goes a long way for basically my two rows of experimental fig trees that I'm scaling and then I have all this Alaska fish fertilizer that I can put on basically all of my trees. If you guys liked what you saw here I got all of my stuff at the local Ace Hardware and I got it at uh, ivorganics.com. Um, Charles is a friend of mine and I have a code, it's Phil10. So if you wanna get any of this, it is in the link in my bio and it's over on my Instagram link too. And you can just go to ivorganics.com and type in Phil10, but I plan on using this for the foreseeable future. As a geologist and gardener, I appreciate where these micronutrients come from. So you have the basalt, which is like volcanic ash that hasn't been broken down yet. It also has volcanic ash that's already been broken down. It's got dolomite, and then it has a nice organic meals like alfalfa, feather, kelp, and then it also has the fish bone. So not only are you getting your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium, the things that are crucial for plant development, but you're also getting those micronutrients that are extremely important for plant development as well, like your calcium, your sulfur, your iron, and also, uh, what am I missing? Your magnesium. And magnesium is a really important micronutrient for figs. So I will put that link in my bio if you guys are curious on this stuff because I think quality over quantity goes a long way. But at the same time, get the well-rounded stuff. Do not be picky with fig trees because they are resilient. Again, this is one of my favorite things is helping fig trees grow. It's very meditative for me. And I can tell you from experience that hitting them with the nice little combo of a liquid and slow release pelletized fertilizer that they will jumpstart their growth into the year and you will see their benefits come May, June, July even on how they grow. So cheers, fig fam. I hope you're gardening this weekend. I hope you're getting out in nature, hearing some birds, getting your fingers dirty in the dirt and holler if you have questions on this stuff. It doesn't have to be Ivy Organics. It doesn't have to be Alaska or Mother Earth Grow. Find your closest garden store. And if you really want your fig trees to benefit, follow the directions, get well-rounded stuff, and liquid comes first as far as nutrient uptake and then the slow release is going to benefit you over the course of months and then hopefully you'll see what can happen over the course of a first year cutting to a two-year-old plant to the trees you get to see around my nursery all right i appreciate you guarding with me i appreciate your support and talk to you soon big fam cheers